Hey guys, welcome to my intermediate advanced level vinyasa flow class. We'll be doing some hip openers, some arm balances that involve those hip openers as well. I hope you enjoy. We'll start in child's pose. So uh, lie to the knees, placing the big toes together behind. Anchor the hips deeply on top of the heels and stretch the arms out in front. Just rest the forehead into the mat and see if there's anywhere in this pose you can soften. Maybe some resistance in the knees and ankles. Go ahead and let that go. And just find yourself in a place where you can uh, deepen the breath. Finding your warrior breath if you like, or just increasing the length and volume of those inhales and exhales. If you like to deepen your child's pose, maybe you come onto the pinky side and drag those armpits towards the floor. We're lengthening all the way from the fingertips through the forearms, triceps, armpits, all the way down the hips. And just notice how that breath may increase the sensations in the pose. Okay, go ahead and plant the palms again. Bring yourself up into downward dog. Knees are coming a little bit closer. Tuck the toes, send the hips high. You can walk out the feet here one at a time, just making this first downward dog a little bit easier on yourself. You can also twist a little side to side if you'd like. Just opening up any areas of the body that feel like they need a little bit more movement, a little more motivation. Bend the knees, look forward, step walk, hop yourself to the front of the mat. We'll find a ragdoll, so just soften the upper body on top of the lower body, keeping a little bend in the knees. Maybe you find a little sway side to side, or you're pedaling out the feet similar to uh, the way we did in Downward Dog. Just allow the chest and the crown of the head to get nice and heavy. Make a little space in between the shoulder blades and the neck. Go ahead and bring hands to hips, flattening out the back, sending the heart forward, squeeze the elbows close behind, and inhale yourself all the way up to standing. At the front of the mat, bring the feet closer together. We're gonna inhale and sweep the arms up high, look in between the fingertips, and exhale, dive towards the floor. Inhale, flatten out the spine, sending hips back and heart forward. And we'll step the left foot to the back of the mat, finding runner's lunge. Hands on either side of that front foot. Make sure you're picking up that back knee away from the floor and lengthening at the spine. So if you notice back is rounded and tail is tilted, try to send the tail down towards the floor and reach the heart forward instead. We're gonna come into cheetah pose from here. So we're just gonna bring the knee in towards the chest, trying to keep the upper body straight and strong. Step the right foot back to meet the left. Nice long inhale and plank, trying to draw the shoulder blades apart, lengthen through the collarbones as well. And lower all the way down to the floor in chaturanga. Nice, slow exhale. Inhale into cobra. Anchoring those hips down into the floor, curl the heart forward, maybe even lift the gaze just a little bit so we're opening up the throat. And exhale, roll over those toes, downward dog. Finding those deep breaths here. Really start to spread the fingertips, see if you can press them out away deeper. Maybe forearms drawn a little bit closer as you rotate the armpits towards the sides of the room.
bend the knees, look forward. We're gonna bring the abdomen right on top of the thighs and land at the front of the mat lightly, maybe finding a little cannonball hop up there. Full inhale, come back into your flat back, half forward fold. Exhale, full fold, maybe using fingertips to drag the upper body on top of the thighs. We'll inhale, reach all the way back up. The more you ground through the feet, the more you'll lift through the fingertips. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. We'll do that on the other side. Inhale, reach up, extending the sternum towards the sky. And exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips, keeping the belly in. Inhale, flatten out, Ardha Uttanasana. This time we're going to step the right foot to the back of the mat, finding runner's lunge. Left knee right above the ankle, sending that left knee forward into space. Pick up the back leg a little bit more by flexing the right quadricep, the front of the thigh. And we're just going to bring the left foot off the floor, keeping the knee in for cheetah pose. Before sending the left foot back. Finding yourself in plank, deep breath in, sending energy out through the heels, reaching forward through the crown of the head. And exhale, lower down, elbows drawing towards the wall behind you, ears reaching forward. We'll inhale into that cobra, draw the belly in, curl that belly button forward, keep a little bend to the elbows, even if you can straighten them out all the way. And exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. In this downward dog, we're gonna find a little figure four shape. So go ahead and bring all the way into that left foot. You can bend the knee a little if you'd like as well. Right knee's gonna come in, turn it out and place that right shin or ankle on top of the left thigh. We're doing a figure four. So see if you can press that right knee deeper away from the floor, flex the right toes towards the floor, and maybe start to straighten the left leg out a little bit more. It doesn't have to be completely straight at all. Try to lift equally up through the hips as well. And we'll switch sides gently, right foot on the floor. Pressing the mat away, see if you can bring the left knee out. Shin on top of the right thigh without the heart caving forward. You wanna keep on focusing on pressing the mat away. Then the left knee's gonna point back, left toes flex towards the floor, send the hips back equally for your downward dog. Inhale, exhale, left foot comes to the floor, bend the knees again, a few hops to the front of the mat again if you'd like, finding a little handstand holder, maybe just landing lightly at the front of the mat. We'll inhale into your flat back, gaze forward, and exhale, fold, crown of the head reaches low as the hips reach high. Inhale, circle arms back up to the sky. And exhale, hands come to heart center. From here, we'll find Garudasana Eagle Pose. So, first, uh, bend the knees like you would come into Utkatasana Fierce Pose. Bring the weight onto the right foot. Left knee is going to lift up, cross over. Place that left foot maybe behind the calf or just squeezing into the side of the foot. At the same time, we're going to find an arm bind. So. Right arm up on the left, since the left knee is up higher. Cross arms, maybe just back to the hands touch here or the insides of the palms. See if you can squat low. Draw the belly in, bring a little space in between the shoulder blades. If you like to get lower, you can nest your eagle, maybe bringing elbows onto the knees. Reach fingertips forward, keep on squeezing the forearms together. Squeezing biceps, squeezing chest, squeezing inner thighs. Bring yourself a little more upright here and we'll just release finding Ardha Chandrasana half moon. So you're gonna open the body up towards the side of the room. Right fingertips eventually find the floor as the left fingertips reach high and that left heel reaches towards the wall behind you. If you find the balance, maybe turn the gaze up towards the sky. Keep on opening up the left hip, bringing it right above the right. Another tricky transitions here. See if you can lift up, 
Find your way into reverse warrior, left foot coming down onto the floor, facing wide edge of the mat. We'll bring the left hand onto the thigh and reach the right fingertips back into space. Keep on sending that left knee, right knee forward. Try to straighten out the arm a little bit more. Send the right shoulder back into space, straighten out the elbow. Make sure there's power reaching out through those fingertips. Keep the belly in and engaged. Inhale yourself back through warrior two. Squeeze shoulder blades in, but lengthen out through the fingertips. Keep on sending the tail towards the floor. We'll straighten out that front leg coming into Trikonasana Triangle. Back foot may step in a little bit more. Keep the heart open towards the side of the room as you reach out forward. Right hand can come to shin. Maybe the floor on the inside of the foot or the out and keep on extending through the left fingertips. Like warrior two, squeeze the shoulder blades in a little bit, but lengthen out through the fingertips. Keep on grounding downward through the feet strongly, reaching forward through the crown of the head. We'll see if we can do a little bit of a bind here. So turn the left palm towards the wall behind. Reach for maybe the outside of the inside of the right thigh. And you're going to dive towards the inside of the right thigh with the right hand, maybe bending the knee so you can find that left hand. And then straighten the leg back up. You're going to be a little more forward folded for this pose. See if you can keep on lifting the torso away from the thigh, squeezing the shoulder blades in towards one another. Inhale. Exhale, start to unravel. We'll bend the front knee, bring both hands onto the floor, tuck the back toes. Hands come onto the floor and reach the right leg back all the way for one legged like downward dog. We're going to walk those hands back to the back foot. Find standing splits here so hands can be a little bit in front of the foot if you'd like as you flatten out the back. Power up that back thigh, reaching out through the toes, and then maybe you fold over that left thigh, kind of like you do uh, your regular Uttanasana forward fold. Maybe left hand comes to ankle to help drag down a little bit deeper. Deep breath in. Exhale, we're going to walk those hands back to the front of the mat. Into your vinyasa, so maybe you're keeping the right leg lifted and you're lowering forward in your trianga instead of chaturanga. And held to up dog, sending the tail towards the floor, keeping shoulders back. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. Take a few breaths here. See if you can spread the toes a little bit more, making some space behind the shins and the ankles. We'll bend the knees, look forward. If you wanted to take a cannonball hop to the front of the mat, do that. Otherwise, maybe a pike hop here. Bending deeply, trying to keep the gaze forward as you lift the heels, legs parallel to the floor. Again, you're gonna land lightly. Maybe in between the hands, a little bit harder with straight legs. You can start to bend them as you come down forward. Whenever you find the front of the mat, inhale, flat back. And exhale, full fold. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands pose. And exhale, bring the hands to heart center. We'll do that other side, this time weight on the left foot. So you bend the knees, keeping the hips back, right knee wraps over the left. Maybe the back of the foot snuggles behind the left calf, doesn't have to. He is keeping the hips low to be able to do that. Arms come out in front, left arm over right, wrap around, seeing if you can bring the palms inward. From here, we'll start to send the hips farther back as we bring the elbows to the knees, maybe a little rounding in the upper back, getting nice and low, keeping all that squeezing in action. 
From here, we'll gradually release, bringing left leg back, right arm up and left fingertips reaching towards the floor for your half moon pose. Coming down nice and slowly. Trying to keep the right hip above the left, lengthening back through the heel. You can reach the crown of the head forward and turn the gaze up towards the right thumb. Make sure you're not holding your breath to find the balance. We'll eventually step that right foot back into space. Slow transition here. Right foot coming onto the floor. Maybe taking a little tumble, but then readjusting your stance. Right arm comes to the right thigh here as we reach the left fingertips back into space. Make sure we're not straightening out this left leg to reach back, but setting the knee in opposite direction of those fingertips. If you feel the back leg buckling into the weight of that back hand, press the leg into the hand and use the core to help lift the whole rib cage away from the floor a little bit farther. Inhale up to warrior two. Try to keep that left knee over the fourth toe. Back leg sending itself back into space as well. Spread the inner thighs. And he'll straighten out that front leg, maybe heel toeing, back toeing just a little bit. Reach as far forward as you can with those straight legs. And when you can't go any farther, hand will come to its spot. Maybe the floor, the shin, right fingertips reach up towards the sky. Imagine you were flattening out the back in a wall or something, so squeezing shoulders back, lengthening out through fingertips, trying to make that nice straight line. Maybe sitting the hips a little bit farther forward so they're not in the way. Again, we'll try to find that bind, so right arm's gonna come behind the back, maybe finding that inside, outside of the thigh. Bend the front knee at first so that you can find your clasp. And maybe the knee never straightens out all the way. If you can, do press through that left big toe on to help straighten out. And keep on using the core to lift the torso away from the thighs and lengthen the rib cage farther over that left foot. Gently release, bending the knee. Both hands come to the floor. Zip that left foot up in a space, one-legged downward dog. And like the other side, we'll walk those hands back to meet the right foot standing splits. Tempting it is, I know, to open up the left hip like a half moon. We're going to close it down, squeezing the inner thighs. Reach the crown of the head towards the toes. Chin coming closer towards the shin. Walk yourself forward nice and slowly, keeping that left leg high for one-legged dog. You can do your one-legged vinyasa here. Slow exhale to the floor. Inhale, keep on sending the hips forward, the belly button forward for your up dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And roll over the toes for your Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Maybe try to flex the fronts of the thighs here a little bit more just to straighten out the backs of the knees if you need it. And we'll inhale, come forward into plank. We're going to do a little uh, handstand type exercise here. So spread the fingers a lot. All we're going to do is connect the thighs and the feet. We'll hop to the outside of the right hand nice and slowly. Hop on back. Hop over towards the left side, keeping the belly in. Hop to the back. We'll do this two more times per side. Trying to see how slowly you can land in between the hands. This is also going to help you for your side crow, by the way. If you know the pose, I hope you can see the similarity in the shape. And when you're done, back through plank, lower all the way to the floor. Take a little breather here, maybe resting arms at the sides of the body. We're going to 
find a bound uh, locust pose, Shalabhasana. So ground the tops of the feet into the floor, lifting the kneecaps. We'll bring the arms alongside the body. See if you can bind at the lower back. Hands are going to join, palms are going to join anyway. Squeeze the shoulders back and down. Curl the heart upward first. Then you can lengthen the knuckles away from the back. Lift the legs as well. Maybe you're staying right here in your uh, Shalabhasana locust pose, or maybe you want to twist over towards the right a little bit, opening up the heart towards the left side. You can do the same thing, knuckles, keeping the lower body kind of still. Just open up the heart towards the right side of the room. Eventually come back to center, gently release, lowering slowly, resting opposite temple if you'd like. Rock those hips out. And just breathe deeper into that floor beneath you, using that connection as a way to indicate how to more fully fill the lungs. You'll feel that expansion of the chest away from the floor. Okay, prop yourself onto forearms. We're going to find a half frog here, Ardha Bekasana. So the right arm is going to come to the center just to uh, help us uh, support your weight here. As you twist over to the left, press the tops of the feet, kneecaps rise just like your locust, and left heel is going to come in. For the easier version of this, you can grab onto the outside of the foot and just pull the heel in towards the glute. If you wanted to do your grip flip as well here, find the inside of the foot. Bend the elbow towards the right side of the room as you start bringing the foot down. And maybe you find enough space to wrap those fingertips forward. Keep on pressing the heel down. Send the elbow up and you can relax the front of the shoulder towards the floor. So you're getting a nice stretch in your posterior deltoid as well as uh, the hip flexor. And if you notice you're coming off the front of that left hip, you want to keep on dragging that left hip or hip flexor thigh back down into the floor as deeply as you feel grounded into the right side. Little bonus, maybe you curl the heart forward also like a locust or cobra. Make sure right leg is active as well. We'll gently release the way we came in, fingertips coming out to the side, elbow bending back. Gently release that left foot into the floor. Maybe give the legs a little shake, the ankles a little roll. We'll do the other side. The left arm comes to the center here just to uh, help support the weight again as we twist over to the right, bringing right heel in. You can find the inside of the foot here, bending the elbow back. You'll have to lift the heart a little bit more to find this grip flip. Fingers rotate from the side to the front of the room and soften that right shoulder towards the floor, feeling a deep stretch for the front of the shoulder. And you can press the foot back into the hand for more resistance, flexing the toes as you bend the elbow deeper to bring the foot back in. Try to squeeze the right knee back towards the midline. Don't let it come too far away from the side of the mat. And now the foot isn't coming too deeply towards the mat either. Try to keep it hugged and cold more closely towards the glute. Deep breath in, trying to draw a belly button forward, chest back forward as well if it's kind of twisted to the right. And exhale, slowly release, being really careful with the shoulder here. Let go. Bring both hands to the floor, find your downward dog. From your downward dog, inhale, right leg up towards the sky, one-legged downward dog. Exhale, knee to chest, float shoulders in front of the rest for cheetah pose, pointing the right toes back into space. Inhale, lengthen the heel back up right this time, opening up the hip towards the sky. See if you can point the right toes towards the left shoulder, maybe kind of coming towards the inside of the left thigh. Inhale, straighten out the legs, square the hips, gaze towards the front of the room, and then step that right foot in between the hands. We're coming into Anjaniyasana, left knee will find the floor, top of the foot as well, and inhale the arms upright. 
Make sure we're tucking the tail towards the floor, not allowing it to come back, and energetically shift the right heel towards the left thigh, the left thigh towards the right heel, squeezing inner thighs, drawing upward through pelvic floor and the belly. Inhale. And we'll take a twist. You can bring the hands to your heart center and revolve over towards the right side of the room. Left elbow is going to try to come to the outside of the right thigh. If you find this difficult, just pick up the hips a little bit more, stacking the hips above the back knee. Then you can find it and then drop the hips back towards the floor. If that's easier, draw the belly towards the outside of the right thigh, trying to stack the shoulders a little bit more. Maybe you want to go a little bit deeper here by reaching the right hand to the left thigh and extending the left fingertips back into space. Kind of a revolved reverse Anjaneyasana here. Keep on drawing the belly in and turning the belly forward. Left hip is going to reach forward as the right hip comes back into space. Deep breath in. Exhale, both hands to the floor. Left hand's gonna stay here as you look over towards the left foot and try to pick up the heel. Like we did a half frog, same kind of thing, a quad stretch here. So you can reach back and find that uh, left foot with the right hand and pull it in deeply. If you need to bring the hips up to find it, do that and then try to lower the hips with the foot. If you can go deeper, maybe come on to forearm and maybe you're even grabbing the foot by the side and bending the elbow out to the side. The right knee may want to point out if you need to point the knee out, point the toes out so the note tees, the toes are coming over the knee. Keep on sending that right shoulder blade back into space as well. Gently release. Bring yourself back up and we'll find half split here. So I like to tuck my back toes and stack the hips initially on top of that back knee. I'll come onto the right heel and slide it a little forward and flex the toes. Flexing the toes is going to be the easiest way for me anyway to straighten out the hamstring and the calf here. And I'll send the hips back and dive over the right thigh. This is your Ardha Hanumanasana. If you wanted to take full splits, by all means, go ahead and take that. One easier way to get into a split type shape would be your tree salasana triad pose. You're just going to bring the right knee forward, coming onto the back foot, staying on the knee, and you'll bring the hands or the forearms onto the floor, and just keep on crawling up that right foot. If you can see the bottom of my foot is on the floor and then the front knee is bent. Kind of like a lizard lunge, just with the foot in front of the knee rather than the foot right underneath the knee. Keep on trying to square the hips forward and hug that right knee into the midline. Okay, walk yourself back up, bringing that right foot all the way up for one-legged downward dog. And any vinyasa of your choice, maybe you're taking a little handstand hop. I'm going to play with a little chin stand work here. So like a three-legged dog, you can come onto the left toes, lower forward through Anjaneyasana. This time placing weight onto that chin in order to bring the right leg higher. You can shift the left leg forward and maybe eventually you're coming all the way onto the chin. You definitely don't have to. Take a breath or two there. Inhale into your belly down back bend of choice. And exhale, come back into your downward dog. That chin stand is not going to come on your first try, most likely. First, just uh, practice placing some weight on the chin, getting it more comfortable for maybe a balancing on it. Keep that belly in, extending hips towards not only the sky, but towards the wall behind you here in your down dog. And we'll do the other side. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. And exhale, knee to chest, coming forward through cheetah pose, rounding the upper back a little bit to bring the knee higher. Inhale, lengthen back, this time opening up the hips towards the left side of the room. Right toes can point towards the 
Left toes can point towards the right shoulder. Maybe almost coming into a tree pose here. If you uh, bring the left toes towards uh, the right thigh, keep on sending the hips more deeply over towards the left. We'll inhale, straighten out the legs, square the hips. And exhale, bring the left foot in between the hands. Anjaneyasana, right knee comes down to the floor, top of the foot as well, and inhale the arms high. Remember to squeeze the feet towards one another as if you could bunch the zip sticky mat in two. And the more you extend upward through the fingertips and draw the heart upward, the less weight the legs are having to take on, maybe making it easier to sink into that right thigh, which you're trying to lengthen here. We'll find our twist, hands to heart center here. Revolve over towards the left side of the room. Right elbow comes to the outside of the left knee. Again, if you need to here, you can bring the hips back a little bit more, even short of, sorry, the stance if you need to, and place the hands together. Bring the heart towards the thumbs, setting the shoulder blades back a little bit towards one another so you can keep on broadening through the front side of the body. And if you'd like to take this a stage deeper, you can always reach back for that right thigh, maybe coming to the calf, Right arm's gonna reach up and tilt the head back to gaze at the fingertips. Try not to bring that left knee back forward with you like a reverse warrior, but keep on sending the left knee forward into space. Keep that belly drawn in to protect those ab muscles and the ab girdle. Inhale. And exhale back to the floor here, kind of keeping this twist over towards the left side. We'll find our quad stretch. Gently bring that right heel up. Can grab the inside of the foot with the left hand and draw it in deeply. Maybe you're coming on two forearms. And maybe you're finding the outside of the foot a little bit more so you can bend the elbow out towards the side and twist the left shoulder blade back into place. My knee's wanting to come out. I'll bring my toes up just a little bit to uh, equal the way my knee is directing. We don't want those knees pace, facing a different direction than the toes. That's where we risk injury just a little bit. We'll gently release, coming into our half Hanumanasana. I'm going to stack the hips above that back knee again, tucking the back toes. I'll bring the left heel onto the floor and uh, make an effort to flex and spread those toes as much as I can to keep all this length through the back of the thigh. Left hip's gonna come back into space and you can crawl the fingertips up forward. And maybe you're just up here, kind of on fingertips because it's hard to dive forward. That hamstring's really tight. You can stay here. If you wanna walk it out towards full split or maybe that trident pose like we did the other side, back foot will come onto the floor like the lizard here almost, except for this left foot is gonna crawl forward as deeply as you can get it. Knee coming up, you can come onto forearms here. Ground through that left big toe mount and keep the knee hugged in. If you feel like going for the full splits after a few breath and breaths in this pose, go ahead and find it. Wherever you are, hands are going to come back onto the floor, onto the right toes, zip the left leg back up to one-legged downward dog. We'll try our one-legged vinyasa again. You can do handstands, really anything you like to do here before you make your way back to downward dog. Or you can lower down and tree yanga. Chin comes onto the floor. Maybe you just practice lifting this left leg a little bit higher if you want to crawl the right toes in a little bit deeper. Maybe you bring both feet up. You definitely don't have to. See what you can do. When you're ready, inhale back in your belly down, back bend. Anything that feels good will work here. And then back into downward dog. Fine. 
I'm out of breath. If you're like me right now, I'm really out of breath. I'm trying to slow down that breath. Eventually, my heart rate is going to join it the slower my breath gets. So you can bend the knees, look forward, finding your way to the front of the mat, any way you'd like here. You can flatten out, half fold. Exhale, fold deeper, maybe taking a few moments here, rocking side to side, maybe widening the feet, finding Padangustasana if you know the pose. And with soft knees but strong feet, circle arms towards the sky, maybe a little back bend as you send the hips forward, reach fingertips back. And then hands are going to come to heart center. At the front of the mat, we're going to come into our extended big toe hold, this time unsupported. So hands are going to come to hips, point the toes straight forward, send both hips down into space. We'll bring the right knee up, flexing the toes, and flex this right quadricep here to help straighten out the legs, send it forward. Try not to lean back into space or lean forward here to keep that leg up. Just using all that leg and core straight, grounding down deeper through that left foot to make it happen. We'll find a standing figure four, so you're going to bring the right knee out to the side and bring the right shin onto the left thigh. So there are a couple variations of this. Maybe you're just a figure four today. If you can go a little bit deeper, you're going to bring the right foot to the inside of the left crease for a hip crease for a half lotus. And if you can kind of Bend the knee and wrap that right arm around to find the right foot. You can take your bound half lotus uh, shape here. We'll start standing up, just getting nice and tall, trying to square the hips and the chest. And we'll lower down slowly so you can start to bend the knee, coming into a kind of a uh, fierce pose type shape here. You can also be right here with the hands uh, not bound as well. We'll make our way all the way to the floor though. Left fingertips find the floor or both if you're still with the figure four. Sink the heart towards the floor, keeping that bend in the left knee. It's going to be a really tight to straighten it out, so keep a little bend there, even if you can straighten it out all the way. From here, we're going to find a toe balance. So right leg stays where it is as you bend the left knee forward. Try to bring the heel in towards the thigh or the glute somewhere. Fingertips can stay on the floor for the balance. You don't have to bring them up. I'm going to bring my right thigh out a little bit more for figure four instead of lotus here. You can also take this uh, pose with the bind as well that we had standing up and forward folding. When you're ready, maybe hands come to heart center and you balance for a second or two. It's one of my weakest poses. I can't really hold it. One other thing you may want to work on instead of uh, the toe balance here is Ekapada Galavasana, one-legged partridge pose. She'll bring the hands to the floor, bring the hips up a little bit high, and we'll place this uh, shin right on top of the arms. You'll have to chaturanga the arms back, elbows back first. Lean here. So maybe you just practice leaning weight forward, making sure fingers are spread and gaze is forward. Maybe you Bring the back foot off the floor, and I'll do this from the side so you can see now. The last thing you may want to try here is maybe bringing the left knee off and extending the left foot towards the wall behind you. Play with whatever you're playing. Take a few breaths, and when you're ready, we'll all meet back up to standing and try that on the other side. If you need to shake out the legs, do anything like that. Now it would all be, also be the good, good time to grab some water or towel off if you need. My arms are getting a little slippery. We'll come into our unsupported Utita Padangustasana here by bringing the weight into the right foot this time, lifting the left knee, and then reaching that left heel forward into space. Again, flexing the left foot here to help uh, pick up the leg a little bit more. Maybe using hands to send both hips down to space. If this left hip is coming down, up, bring it back down. Then we'll bend the knee and bring that right shin on top of the left shin on top of the right thigh. 
So maybe you're just standing here up in your figure fold four. Again, if you wanted to bring the left foot to the hip crease and maybe grab onto that left hip foot, we have this nice bind here. You can also use the strap if you'd like to, maybe pause the video and come back to it. We'll stand up here for a moment. Then we'll bend the right knee forward. We'll try to fold over the thigh. If you need to stay in a more Utkatasana fierce pose shape, maybe you're balancing right like this. If hands can come to the floor, maybe you're bringing those to the floor as well. So you can still have the bind here if you'd like. You don't have to. Keeping the right knee bent. You can see mine is heavily bent. If I straighten out too much, it really starts to pull. I like to keep it bent. And then we'll come bringing the hips on top of the heel here for our toe balance. You can see I still have the bind. You definitely do not have to have the bind here. Maybe one hand comes to heart center briefly. It doesn't last long for me. I'm gonna try to get in figure four a little more accessible. Helps if this right thigh is parallel to the floor, not too lifted high. And there you go. Just a second of time I can balance. But I'll also go for that Ekapada Galavasana. So hands are gonna come out in front. I'll lift the hips, chaturanga the elbows back. You have to have the shelf right here for the thigh to sit on or the shin to sit on in order to balance here. Wrap the left toes around the tricep to lean forward. Maybe you're just practicing leaning weight forward or you can keep the right knee on to the shin here. Maybe lifting it high for your one-legged partridge pose. Keep that gaze forward and the upper back kind of rounded a little bit to keep yourself upright. Just play with that. Maybe you find a couple seconds of hang time and maybe you're still in your toe balance wherever you are. Instead of meeting standing up, we'll go ahead and meet sitting down. Okay, we'll find our Navasana boat pose. So try to squeeze the inner thighs and the feet as you roll back, keeping the heart lifted and the shoulders a little engaged behind. Maybe you're turning the gaze up as you start to straighten out the legs and reach the fingertips out forward. Keep on drawing the belly in. The more you reach out through the toes, the more you're reaching out through the crown of the head, the less weight that tail is going to have to take on. So think about it that way. Make sure you're breathing. And then gently release feet onto the floor. Anything you need to do to reset, go ahead and do that. In keeping this kind of theme with our figure four shapes, we're gonna try a figure four a Navasana. Like with the figure four forward fold, there's also a binding and a half lotus version of this, so you don't have to find that. So, we'll lengthen the left leg out on the floor, and either you're going to come into your half uh, figure four here, and you can bring the knee up, maybe find the big toe with the left hand, and this will be your shape right here. You can grab onto the foot with both hands and pull it in. Or maybe you're finding a bind by bringing the foot all the way into half lotus, finding that big toe with the fingers. Getting a left to reach for that big toe. Straighten out here. Keep the shoulder back into the back, kind of like we did for our normal boat pose. And gently release. Bringing both legs back onto the floor, shake them out. We'll do that on the other side. If you need to release the lower back, a lot of work to keep it upright, just bring the hands behind the back and you can rock side to side. Otherwise, the right leg's gonna come onto the floor as we find our figure four or half lotus. And again, you'll bring the right knee up, finding the big toe. The hand can also be used for support. Maybe you keep it right here, or you can find that foot with both hands. One last thing you may want to do is try to bring the chest closer towards the shin by bending the elbows back and you can get a little bit more upright here. It doesn't last long for me. One more way to improve that posture that you're working on also. Take a couple breaths in it. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and slide the legs out again, giving them a little shake. We're gonna work into some uh, balances with the lotus. So first we'll uh, do fire log pose in order to uh, make lotus happen easier. The way this is gonna work is both feet are gonna come forward. 
Left shin is going to come parallel to the front of the mat here, flexing the toe, trying to lengthen the knee back onto the floor. Going to pick up the right foot, and maybe you need some blocks here. You can have a block underneath this knee if it doesn't quite reach the floor, and a block underneath this knee if it doesn't quite reach the floor either. If you can stack knee over ankle, ankle over knee, this is eventually the shape you're going to make, and you can want to keep on flexing the toes straight towards the front of the room. You can stay more upright like this. There are other shapes you can make here. Maybe you're folding forward and you can come over to the left side and you can come over towards the right side as well. Spend a few breaths doing that. If there's anything else you needed to do, maybe you're bringing hands to heart center, twist over towards that right foot and place the right elbow into the left foot and curl the heart and the belly over towards the left side of the room. These are all going to help open the outsides of the hips for that lotus shape Padmasana. Wherever you are, we'll start to release here. So you're going to bring this right foot back up, place it gently on the floor. Left foot's going to be lifted up by the hand as well and shoot the legs out in front. It's going to be really intense for the knees and ankles and hips as well. So you want to come out of these poses very gently the way you come into them as well. We'll have to do both sides, obviously. So this time, uh, right shin is going to come parallel towards the floor. Try to sink the knee in towards the floor. Lengthen it out to the side just a little bit too. We're going to grab onto that left shin. Same thing, try to parallel it on top of the shins. Again, if you need those blocks for a little stacking, go ahead and find that, no shame there. And if it's intense, just to sit upright and stay just like this, by all means, just stay right up right here. If you notice you're trying to fold forward and there's some intense pulling at the sides of the hips, please do not do that. Just back off and go where the body is willing to open. And again, you can lengthen out towards the right side. And crawl over towards the left as well. Just noticing how the shape in the upper body may have changed the shape in the lower body. And again, if you wanted to find that twist, left elbow to left foot and press into that to draw the upper body over towards the right. We'll eventually come back up right nice and slowly, helping the legs out in front. Shake them out. So uh, the first pose we're going to do arm balance of is a low lasana. It's a scale pose. And you can do this cross-legged or with lotus. So if you can't get into lotus, I'll show you this version right now. Cross-legged. Hands onto the floor. You're gonna lean the weight a little forward just so the elbows are a little bit bendy at first. Puff up the upper back, keep the gaze forward. You can squeeze the knees up and just lift the shins off the floor, the ankles. And you can even keep one on the floor just to help you balance. You're drawing in at the belly, in at the pelvic floor. And it doesn't last long, just a little lift. And then you can bring yourself back down. You did one side, you have to do the other side. I'll instruct the other side in lotus. Right foot to the inside of the left thigh. And you can also do this in half lotus as well. Left foot underneath and you're finding your arm balance just like that. Maybe the left foot comes into the right hip crease and you're lifting up again for your scale pose. And if you want to have some fun with your scale pose, maybe you do a little rocking side to side. Just for funsies, it's a little bit harder if your legs are crossed and the legs aren't the feet aren't up here already attached, they'll kind of fall onto the floor a little bit with that cross-legged. So make sure you did uh, your low lasana on both sides. Maybe starting with cross-legged and making your way up to lotus. And then you'll straighten out those legs again, give them a little rest. If you need to rest the back, leaning back again, you can do that. And I figured I'd throw a full partridge pose into this class as well, just because we did one-legged. If you forget what the one-legged was, one shin to the forearms and we're arm balancing like this. One-legged partridge pose, a little bit different from two-legged partridge pose. 
Gonna find your lotus. I'm doing my left foot first on this one and then my right. What's gonna happen is you're gonna bring the arms out to the side for this one. Try to rock in the arms a little bit. It's same thing, drawing inward through the pelvic floor in through the belly, lift up, and maybe you bring the shin on top of the forearm here a little bit more, a little above the elbow, and you'll be out to the side just like this. Won't last for long, just do what you can do. Even if you're not coming off the floor, just practice leaning that weight forward. Perfectly good work. We did one side, we'll have to do the other. Hands out towards the left side. You want to help revolve the whole upper body over towards that side first, so do that. Then you'll lean the weight forward. Maybe you can stay on knees and lift the hips before you find the strength to bring that shin towards the form and maybe you get it above the elbow. If not, that's perfectly okay. You'll bring it back down. Gently uninterlace those legs. We'll do the other side. Two ways to do lotus and two ways to do your arm balance, so we'll have to do both. So I guess the uh, left foot's gonna come in this time. I don't really remember which side I did. Just make sure you do your opposite side and do both diagonals. I do this uh, from the side view so you can see both. So I'm over to my left, picking it up, trying to bring that shin to above the elbow a little bit, keeping the gaze forward. I don't last long, I come right back down. I'll do it on the other side, maybe giving the shoulders a little shake out, relieving any tension there. Start to twist over to the right, pick it on up, your partridge pose, trying to lift the hips a little bit more, keep the knees lifted high as well. And I guess you're done here, you can shake the legs out a little, gently coming out of the pose, bring them out in front. Come all the way up the back. Catch your breath a little bit here. Don't feel bad if you didn't get into any of those arm balances. They all take a bunch of practice. You're not going to get it right on the first try. Maybe not even your first 100, but keep with it. And you'll get there eventually one day. We'll do some back bends just to uh, even out the body a little bit more. Starting with the bridge, feet are gonna come underneath the hips. Draw the arms along the side, squeeze the shoulder blades under the back, making a shelf for your heart to sit on. Keep you can See if you can keep on grounding through the tops of the shoulders and keeping the backs of the shoulders squeezed in. You can lift up right. Draw the belly in, sending the knees forward, lengthening the chin towards the chest. You can take this version of bridge, or maybe you're joining hands here, making your bound bridge. I find this a lot easier to keep the shoulder blades squeezed together, so I like this version a lot. Another version you have, maybe hands are coming below the hips here to help lift the hips, not just sinking the hips on top of the fingers, but using the hands for support. Maybe you lift one leg at a time, bending the knee, straightening out the leg, bring that leg down, do the other side. Any type of shape you wanted to make in your bridge pose, go ahead and find that. When you're ready, one vertebrae at a time, slide down onto the back. You can windshield walk the legs side to side, or maybe just extend the legs out onto the floor. Make sure there's no stickiness left in that lower back before we do our second and final back bend. Any back bend you wanted to take again, I'm gonna find an upward bow, maybe finding my way onto my forearms this morning. We didn't do much, too much work into the back bends, but uh, do what you can do. Hands can start underneath the shoulders, fingers facing the front of the room, ground the palms, spread the fingers. Keep the elbows closed and maybe you come onto the top of the head first and then all the way into your upward bow. Keep on trying to straighten out the arms and press the heart forward, press to the feet as well. If you wanna try coming onto forearms, head comes onto the floor again, and you'll just scoot the fingertips forward until maybe you're on forearms just like this. Head can stay on the floor, or you can lift it up, 
or send it through. And you're really just trying to pull that heart through the arms. Take a couple breaths to come out of the forms. You're just back onto the hands as if you'd come back in an upward bow. And you'll slowly lower all the way onto the floor. Windshield wipe the legs. And then the knees can come in towards the chest. And just rounding, making space through the back of the body by compressing the front of the body in towards one another. Okay, lengthen the legs all the way onto the floor. We're gonna bring the right knee in towards the abdomen for one legged wind reliever. And from here, find a twist. You can keep with bent knee. I'm gonna go for a straight leg and grab the outside of my right foot and lengthen my leg all the way towards the left side of the room, pulling my right shoulder blade deeper into the right side. I'll gaze over my right fingertips. Draw the belly in and turn it over towards the right side of the room. And if your energy is just spent here, just allow gravity to do the shape for you. You can completely relax the body in the form that you've brought it to and just sink it into that support underneath you. We'll do the other side coming onto the back. Extend the right leg forward as you draw the knee in towards the left knee and towards the abdomen. And maybe taking that bent knee over towards the side or straightening out the leg, you can find the outside of the foot. Bring it on over. Lengthen the left fingertips out to the side, turning the gaze towards the left side of the room as well. And just think of pulling the body in two opposing directions, the hips, the foot over towards the right, the upper body, the fingers, the gaze over towards the left. Just slow down the breath, get the body more ready for its final resting pose. Can gently release. I'm going to uh, end practice right here and come into my Shavasana. As always, if there's anything else you needed to take before you come into your final resting pose, do that. As always, a uh, legs up against the wall pose is pretty nice before closing. Maybe a shoulder stand in a plow or any other uh, supported poses or any other supine hip openers will uh, bring the body closer to its more restful state. And when you are ready, just soften the body. See if there's anywhere that's resisting the floor. My glutes are tightening just a little bit. I'll lift the hips and replace them back down on the floor and in the spot that they're more easily able to settle down for a long period of time in. And I'll just scan the body for more places to soften, especially in the face, trying to bring a sense of lightness to the brow and the eyelids, the cheeks and the temples. If you're still breathing your strong, controlled Ujjayi yoga breaths, go ahead and soften those right now. Just come back to your original or natural state of breathing. And maybe it helps you to keep more aware during your Shavasana. If you think of your breath as a, something that's not coming from inside of you, like you would notice somebody else's breath, and just notice the sound of it or maybe the way it shapes the body. We'll quiet the mind as well. Letting go of any thoughts that are trying to lead you away from being present, trying to lead you away from being in the body, noticing the breath and softening the muscles and the bones.
Take as long as you need here, 5, 10, 15 minutes even. Please remember to, uh, if you like my content here, like, subscribe, comment on my videos, anything to help support me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Namaste.